Hi, welcome to today's video and thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be looking at this subject, the August 5th, 2024 market crash, yesterday's market crash. And more importantly, really what to do with your uh, money, how to manage your money during severe market volatility. I'm going to share with you the three reasons why the market is upside down or why it's so volatile and then how you can manage your money in a way that doesn't disrupt your cash flow during these times of uh, severe market volatility. So I hope you enjoy today's video. Now, this was yesterday's close of the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, the S&P TSX, the Dow Jones, and the Nikkei. And I'm gonna, you're gonna understand why is he showing the Nikkei? Because this had a lot to do with what happened yesterday. So this is a year-to-date chart, the S&P 500 up 8.73%, the NASDAQ up six, six and a third, um, the S&P TSX, which is the Toronto market, is up 6%. This is at the end of the close, right? The Dow Jones, 2.69% on the year, and the Nikkei down 6% on the year. Interestingly enough, I'm going to skip right ahead to what's going on today. And so you can see the um, this is the live view of the NASDAQ, or the Nikkei. And you can see from around about here, we had um, an interest rate decision in Japan, the Bank of Japan in increasing interest rates, and you see the market falls off dramatically yesterday. And now a rebound. So yesterday the market was down 12% on the Nikkei and up 11% today, so almost erasing all of the returns. Here is a live view of all of the year to date, um, but giving you um, what's going on you can see right here the market is actually beginning to go back up again in all these right so you've got the s p 500 is now up close to 10 percent on the year the nasdaq is up 7.2 percent the s p tsx is up six percent the dow jones is now up 3.6 percent so we're beginning to see a bit of a rebound in some of those uh, indices in north america so let's go back to these slides so you can get a sense of why am I showing you the Nikkei and everything? Well, here is just some information about just to set your mind at, not at ease, but just understanding market volatility is the norm right now. And so you have to understand that the S&P 500, 94% of the time is going to go down in any given year, at least 5%. And 64% of the time, it goes down at least 10% of, of the time. So that's from 1928 to 2023. So build into the way you create your portfolios or the discussions you have with your advisor, the fact that there's gonna be market volatility in any given year, easily 64% of the time down 10%. So if you are you know, uneasy about yesterday's event, just understand that it, is this a, um, a systemic, problem that we're about to run into or is this just a one-time event remember the market has very short-term memory and when something bad happens and it appears to be a surprise and the market does not like surprises the market sells off dramatically and then everybody at the end of the day goes well actually that wasn't a really bad event we do see a lot of great things ahead and the market rebounds the next day which is what's kind of happening right now here are some reasons to sell and this is just to sort of strike that sentiment home or this idea home that you need to just take a deep breath sometimes and, and examine. Is this really a problem? So if you look at just the right hand corner here, because all the stuff in, to the left is 2009, but you can see there are reasons why you might have thought, maybe I need to sell, go to cash, get out of the way. This is just too much volatility for me. And so you can see over the last four years, we've had COVID, we've had um, a U.S. election, now we're having another U.S. election, we've had different variants of COVID, we have had political geographical events going on, and despite all these things and the volatility that's happening, that solid black line from left to right kept going up. Even though it dropped dramatically and scared the heck out of everybody, it went up. So what you have to do, tip number one, is build a portfolio that's not only resilient, that manages your money well, but 
manages the cash flow of your portfolio so that when you have these negative events, it's not interrupting your cash flow or costing you a lot of money to get at your money. So this is really important. When I say cost you a lot of money to get at your money, meaning when you do withdrawals in a negative market, that really accelerates the movement of your portfolio to a zero much faster, right? So it's let's keep that in mind. And it's at the end of the video, I'll show you exactly how to do that. Okay, number one, one of the reasons why, this is probably the biggest reason why the market is behaving the way it is, is the Federal Reserve. They were expected that they would have cut rates and didn't cut rates. They, in July, left the rates at 525 to 5.5%, the eighth consecutive meeting, um, and did not lower the rates. So this set the market on fire. People were, come on, let's, it's about time. Canada has lowered rates. How come we're not lowering rates? We have a much bigger economy. Surely we should be in a better position than Canada. And they didn't lower rates. And, you know, then this happens. They get the unemployment jobs report comes out. And uh, the market says, wait a minute, a lot of people are, are out of work. In fact, it's not getting better, it's getting worse. Look at the jobs report, it's going up, up, up. People are unemployed, more and more people are unemployed. And they're saying, wait, that's a big surprise because we expected to have a interest rate reduction and here we have this problem going on. Come on, Federal Reserve, get with it, get with the interest rate reduction. So when that happened, especially the jobs report, that was a big surprise. And that set the market into a frenzy of worrying about what recession, right? Are we in a recession? Are we going to get close to recession in the United States? So what is this? This is something called the SAM rule. What this is is a fancy calculation that says, you know, when the market is filled with lots of indicators, signals as to what's going on. And this is one of the signals that, that the market pays attention to. When the SAM rule basically says that if there is a moving average, three month moving average, where the unemployment rate is at least a half a point higher than the 12 month low, you can see the bottom right hand corner where it's ticking up, there's your half a point. Well, in fact, the SAM rule actually exists every single recession. That's that gray line, that vertical gray line you see. Every gray line had that half a point tick up in unemployment rate uh, just before each recession. So it signaled that the, the US economy was gonna go into recession. And here we are, it's signaling again that there's one indicator that there should be a recession close by. Um, so this is another reason why if you take the unemployment rate, take the SAM rule, no reduction in interest rates, people got nervous and there was a big sell-off. Well, let's talk about recession fears. There's something called the VIX. The VIX is really a, a, another calculation that says really what is the 30-day expectation for volatility in the market. That's all that this does. And it's a gauge of fear in the market. Anything over a 30 uh, indicates tremendous uncertainty. There's the VIX yesterday, okay? <laughs> this is crazy. It was up 65% in one day. So you see on the left hand side it says previous close and open 23.39%. So the VIC was below 30. So people weren't really all that nervous before yesterday about market volatility. It seemed like they were pretty cool about what was going on with the market. We had positive returns, right? You look at your own portfolios, you have positive returns for the year. And then in one day, Look to the right, there's the VIC. It spikes at nine o'clock in the morning, just straight up. What's going on? What's the news? What's driving this problem? Well, the problem is actually the carry trade in Japan. So why did I show you the Nikkei? This is why. There's something called the carry trade. I'm gonna show you an animation. I'm gonna go through it really quickly. So this should be a really easy explanation as to know why this is going upside down. In um, most of the markets around the world, everything, as you might know, is leveraged. Billions and billions and billions of dollars are being borrowed and being put into the market. And 
well, that elevates your return, but it also ex really elevates the negative side of it as well. So let's look at this. So this is that Nikkei, right? You can see it falling off the map there. What happened was the Bank of Japan increased their um, interest rates to 0.25, percent You know, we're looking at crazy numbers here in North America. They're at 0.25%. It was at 0.1 and they increased it to 0.25, a pretty hefty increase. And the market just sold off. But why is that a problem? Okay, let's look at what the carry trade is. You are an investor. He looks pretty grumpy. And you want to get involved in the stock market. You see all these beautiful, we call them Magnificent Seven. All these tech stocks are going wild. Everybody wants to get in get involved in AI and everything. So you say, you know what, you might be just an individual investor, but it's likely that you might be a big company or an institution with hundreds of millions of dollars and you want to get into the market. So what happens is you say, well, I'd like to borrow. I'd want to leverage our position. So you don't like the 7% it's going to cost you to borrow. So you go, where in the world could I borrow money that's going to be the cheapest to borrow and we can put all this money and get the spread between what it costs us to borrow and what we can make off the market. So you go, wait a minute, Japan's got this low rate. Let's go to Japan and borrow all this money at 0.1%. That'll be sweet. That'll work out for us. So you go to Japan and you take this loan and you're going to get all this yen, Japanese yen, you're going to buy uh, Canadian dollars. Most of the time you're buying US dollars, but I'm just trying to keep it you know, Canadian content here. So you're taking the yen and you're going to convert that to Canadian dollars and you're going to take your money and you're going to go and get into all those stocks that you wanted to get involved in and then maybe even buy some Bitcoin. So now you're happy because you are stacking cash. But then what happened? The, Fed, the uh, Japanese uh, Bank of uh, Japan goes ahead and raises interest rates to 0.25% from 0.1%. What's the problem with that? The problem is that you still need to make interest payments on the money that you borrowed. So now when you had $1 Canadian and you needed to make your interest payment, your $1 Canadian is no longer worth $1. It's worth 92 cents. And you go, well, that's not cool. So it's going to cost me about a dollar and eight cents to actually start paying the interest charge. So that's an increased cost to you. That's cutting into your profitability on your all your trades or whatever assets you're buying. So you go, wait a minute, we need more money to make our interest payments than we did last month. So where are we going to get the extra money? Well, we're just going to start selling the stocks that we had because we need to raise capital. And when you raise when you start selling, fire selling these stocks, what does that do? It drives the market down. So that is the volatility from the carry trade is the fact that the market is selling off because what's going on? All this selling going on. What's going on? All these great companies are selling off. What's the story? Is there something wrong with these companies? Nope. It's just these guys need to raise capital to continue their payments to the stock market or to their loans. So that creates enormous market volatility. And you and I, as just regular people going to work every day, are thinking, what is going on with the market? It must be, the economy must be really bad when we see these things happening. I should sell too, because that, that what do I don't know? And this is such a complicated thing that is going on in the world of how um, wealthy, wealthy institutions make a lot of money this is how they do it and it causes disruption for the just normal people like you and I who are working every day. So what do you do about it? So during market volatility, you are going to see, see that straight line going down, that's COVID by the way, you are going to take cash equal to one to three years of your expenses and you're going to just park it in money market or a ladder GIC strategy so that when you're doing withdrawals, you're taking money from not from your portfolio that is experiencing a, a severe negative withdrawal because that would accelerate your portfolio faster to a zero balance. So you're going to take one to three years, depending on your, your risk tolerance, one to three years, put it in cash, and then do your withdrawals from that account and let the market recover over the long term. Let it do what it needs to do with solid investments and you can recover with that part of your portfolio knowing that you can continue to go to Florida or continue to travel or 
play golf, do whatever it is that you want to do, spend money on yourself or your grandkids, enjoy your lifestyle knowing that the money that's coming out of your portfolio is coming from a cash position, not from a stock that you need to make a hard decision on to sell or a mutual fund or a segregated fund, whatever. You can watch all these videos up here about why you should be in segregated funds when you go to retire because it, it offers you guarantees that you don't get in uh, regular investments. So this is one way for you to be able to uh, simply manage your money in, in I think, a way that's going to create a lot less anxiety when these events happen. You can go, it's okay, my whole year is sitting right there in front of me in a cash account or a money market account. Fine, let the market recover. We're good. We can still go on holidays. Everything is paid for. Okay, so this is a very simple, no stress way to do that. Um, and I encourage you to talk to your advisor. If you're not sure what to do about that, give me a call. I'm happy to help you sort that out. Okay, question for you. You stuck around. Well done. When the markets drop, what do you do? Do you sell? Do you add your portfolio? Or do you do nothing at all? Put your comments below. I want to hear or read what you are saying. Everybody loves reading other people's comments because people want to know, am I the only one that feels this way? So again, put your comments below. I'm happy to uh, respond to them. Again, thanks for tuning into today's video. I really appreciate you showing up again. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks and be well.